But first up, we turn to Senator Ron Johnson, who had a few heated and choice comments today in the Blinken hearing on Capitol Hill. Please take a listen to what Mr. Johnson said. If I were just to read your testimony, not having watched any news, I would literally think this was a smashing success. But I do read the news, as most Americans do, and we realize this is a complete debacle. Uh, the Wall Street Journal summarizes it quite nicely in their piece, just the title, How Biden Broke NATO. The chaotic, Af the chaotic Afghan will draw his shocked and angered U.S. allies. Again, that's, that's detachment from reality that our, our NATO allies are on board with this thing. They're not. Well, Senator Johnson, as always, great friend. Welcome back to the show. We appreciate your time. I know it's a long day. Let me just ask you now, what, what's, what has Blinken respond to this? Everybody knows it's not a smashing success. You can't keep blaming Donald Trump for this. What does he say? Well, just a bunch of bureaucratic blather. Um, the, this administration has concerned me from the start when President Biden completely dismantled President Trump's successful border policy. Pretty well ended the uh, flow of unaccompanied children, family units, so we were building the wall. We, we could have secured this border and we could have fixed our immigration system. But President Biden dismantled that and then denied there's a crisis. Even though for the last four or five months we've been apprehending more than 6,000 people per day. We'll have somewhere close to 600,000 people dispersed through America. That's a population larger than the size of Wyoming. And this administration continues to deny that reality. Fast forward to the debacle in Afghanistan. Again, if you just listen to the administration officials trying to put lipstick on this pig, you know, pr produce the spin, you think this, this is a fabulous success. Well, President Trump or President Biden called it an extraordinary success. It's not. It was, it's a debacle. And so it's that detachment from reality that really concerns me because if, if you're not willing to acknowledge reality, uh, you're going to continue to make mistake after mistake, and that's what this administration has been. It's been one rolling disaster after another. You know, Senator, that's an important point. you got to deal with the reality, accept what's happened, clear the decks in order to move on. I wanted to move on, not because I'm a great fan of this administration, but like you, this is, uh, you know, I believe this is a stain on America and its credibility, and I'd, you know, like to cover that stain or fix that stain or erase that stain. But when does... When does Blinken and the others resign? In other words, when do they accept blame? When do they take ownership and just resign? I suppose when President Biden demands it. But let's face it, Larry, this is just a continuation of President Obama's administration. And, of course, he had that blunder of, of strategic historical significance when he bugged out of uh, Iraq, which allowed ISIS to rise from the ashes of, of al-Qaeda in Iraq. So this is just part and parcel. This is the same cast of characters throughout the top levels of the administration. Now we have military leaders that are more concerned with wokeness and uh, uh, male anger, uh, white anger, than they are with military effectiveness, and it's showing in their strategies and in their policies. So no, I am, I am across the board concerned about this president, another three and a half years, the disasters, the inflicted, the self-inflicted wounds that we are already witnessing, and we've got three and a half more years of this, this should concern every American. Did Blinken indicate a forward plan? I mean, we talk about the Pineapple Express and the Underground Railway being set up by, you know, former people in the service, by veterans and so forth, uh, Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, Green Berets. Did he talk about Because we, one of the things that's so troubling, I think, to, to people around the country You've still got a lot of Americans, uh, you know, quote unquote, left on the battlefield, and a lot of our Afghan allies left on the battlefield. The Taliban is going house to house, and some people say they've already started executions. Now, did that come up in today's hearing? Did Blinken have anything to say about that? Well, again, their plans are based on a fantasy world where now that they've, we've, we've ended the military mission, and now we have a diplomatic mission. So now we're going to deal with the Taliban through diplomacy. Uh, we're going to work with them through the UN. We've got all these agreements. We've got, uh, you know, all these countries signing on, demanding, demanding the Taliban behave in a civilized fashion. Taliban hasn't ch changed stripes. Mm. They're still the brutal Islamic terrorists that they've always been. And 
the only thing that's going to change is that the press will ignore it, just like they're ignoring the, board, the crisis border, just the way they're ignoring the massive deficit spending and the increase in the debt. The press, let's face it, they enabled Biden. They elected Biden. They're going to cover for Biden in his administration. And once again, that's a real problem for this country. Well, let me switch gears slightly, but now that you mention it, Senator Johnson, why do you suppose that all these Democratic tax hike plans, $3 trillion and Lord knows what, a 10,000 page bill, all this massive spending? But if you look at the tax stuff, as I'm sure you have, the worst hit were small businesses and working families. Not fat cats, but small businesses and working families. And I invite your attention to your key point. Four years ago, I have not forgotten the 20% deduction for small businesses, which gave it some parity with the deduction in the C Corp rate to uh, 21%. That's been wiped out. That's been wiped out. Now, why would any sensible person want to go after small businesses, which is really, as I said earlier, the heartbeat of America. I don't get it. It's for the same reason robbers rob banks. That's where the money is. And, and we all know that. You know, the top 1% has about 20% of the world's of our assets, but they pay 40% of the income tax already. So you can boost that on the top 1%. It just isn't enough to pay for the seven or eight trillion dollars in spending that's going to go along with those two to three trillion dollars of tax increases. I mean, that, that's what's getting lost in this. When you talk about Bernie's budget being three and a half trillion dollars, that's added deficit. Now, the three and a half trillion dollars is understated by a couple trillion dollars, but you have to look at how much spending is going to be, you know, reduced apparently in deficit wise with about two to three trillion dollars in taxes. So you're talking about another seven or eight trillion dollars in additional spending on top of baseline spending that also is unsustainable. So again, th this is a blowout. This is unsustainable, but this is what Democrats do. Well, so as I understand it, looking at some of these proposals, particularly the Ways and Means proposal, where the bulk of it comes from, Senator Johnson, they're saying you're going to get a growth dividend. You're going to get dynamic growth scoring. In other words, a $3 trillion tax hike or whatever across the board is going to produce additional economic growth, which is going to give them another six or seven hundred billion in revenues. Now, uh, as I've said last evening, naughty, naughty, that violates the Laffer curve. It also violates common sense. Uh, give me a good old left wing socialist. They're not going to argue that higher taxes on everybody is going to promote growth. But that's in this new reconciliation package. Can you stop it? Can you derail it? How do you, how do you advise us to try to stop it? I to talk, talk to Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Maybe they actually will hold the line in this. But no, j just like this administration is denying reality. That's basically a, a, a problem with every Democrat. They just deny basic human nature. The more you tax success, the less you get of it. So there is no way if you increase taxes on the productive part of our economy, you're not going to get more tax revenue. Uh, it's just it's just impossible. You're, you're not going to get a growth dividend. You're going to get a, a tax decrement detriment. This is going to be harmful. You're going to get less revenue. You're going to expand the deficit and then throw on top of that the seven to eight trillion dollars of additional spending that we're probably going to be seeing here to be married with this tax increase. And you'll really see the, the, the diabolical plans, the destructive plans of the Democrats. Tough story. Tough story. Senator Ron Johnson, we appreciate your time, sir. Thanks. Hope to see yep. you soon, sir.